Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Just a, a few announcements before we get started in a few minutes. If you're not familiar with our parish, we have re uh, restrooms located. Gentlemen is right through that exit, ladies right through here. If you need to use the restroom at any point, you may go and use it there. A um, Couple quick reminders about photography. Please feel free to take photos. We just ask that there's no flash photography and that at no point do you get up out of your seat and move around the sanctuary, all right? Um, and lastly, just to reiterate, hopefully uh, the parents pass this on to you, um, but for the distribution of communion, we will have Monsignor in front of the altar, and he will be giving communion to the first communicants and their immediate families, so moms, dads, siblings. Um, if you are a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle or a godparent uh, or another friend that's here, uh, we're so glad to have you and we're going to ask that you receive communion from myself or Miss Maddie on either side of the altar um, just to keep the line moving so we don't get really backed up and also just to minimize uh, exposure for Monsignor. All right, and we'll have ushers that will kind of be helping guide the flow of traffic as well. But once again, thank you so much for being here and we're going to get started in a little bit.
good afternoon. Welcome to St. Gregory the Great. If you are seated inside the church, you can now put your offertory gifts in the basket that the ushers will bring around. If you are seated outside, please continue to put them in one of the green collection boxes. Don't forget, you can also use the online giving option via the parish website. Thank you. Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Gregory the Great and our celebration of First Communion. Our presider is Monsignor Gallagher. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And welcome on this not-so-bad afternoon, especially all you children breaking here, make your first Holy Communion, and you have brought your families with you. Uh, those who are living close by, and some people from as far away as Illinois. So, we're here, first of all today, to thank God for bringing us here. And we're thanking God for our families, for the mom and the dad, and our grandparents, and our cousins, and our friends. And we're here to say, yes, Lord, we are glad to be here, because we're coming to celebrate our First Communion, and to thank you for bringing us to this wonderful day. And as we begin our prayers, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this holy mystery, let's put ourselves before the Lord and ask once again for his loving kindness and his constant mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we can be seated and hear God speaking to us in the first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is a setting of Psalm 145.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You, already prune, you are already pruned because of the word I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, please be seated for a moment or two. Again, to welcome you all to this wonderful day, one of the great days, especially for all you who are making your first communion, it'll be the first big, big day. Now, the first day you don't remember at all, the day you were baptized. Most of you were just tiny little children at that time. Now you've grown and you're 
Also, you're here, I think you're in your second grade. So you're learning a lot and you're getting to know other people as well. So we're glad to have you here, but especially we're here today because of one person. And I'll bet you, you can guess the name of that one person. That name is Jesus. You're here because Jesus basically has asked you to come to make your first Holy Communion. And Jesus is going to be giving himself to you under the appearance of bread and under the appearance of wine. And so when you come up to receive, you put out your hand like that and whoever is giving out or distributing Holy Communion will put the little piece of consecrated bread in your hand and you put it into your mouth and you chew it and you swallow it and you have Jesus then who is also living in you. Remain in me, as the gospel passage said, and I will remain in you. And that's, that's what we have to give thanks for. And we're here too with your mom and your dad and some of you have your grandparents and some of you have your cousins and, and we're here to welcome them and to share with them the great joy that is ours on this special day. And above all, to remember this day particularly and that we'd be able to look back and say, I remember when I made my first Holy Communion and that was a terrific day. And you're all here to build on that day and to look back and say, thank you, Jesus. Let's stand together for a moment. And we recite together the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate suffered, died, and was buried, and on the third day rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Turning now to the Father, we ask for all the gifts that we receive. Let us pray for the Holy Church. May it feed us with God's holy word and with the holy bread of the Eucharist, giving us life eternal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our parents and our siblings, our relatives and our friends, our godparents and our grandparents, that they may enjoy the gift of deep faith and peace in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the priests, catechists, teachers, and all who helped us in preparation for our first confession and Holy Communion. May God bless them and bestow upon them the gifts they need for happiness and salvation. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the children who today, for the first time, will receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. May they love him with all their hearts and forever live faithfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our dearly departed. May the good Lord grant them mercy, forgiveness, and full blessings in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of us gathered here. May each of us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and experience with faith and love this encounter with our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for bringing us all together this afternoon. Help us to rejoice in your gifts, and above all, to bless all the children and the parents who have come here in celebration. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is in, you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, let us pray together our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Luck not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer that peace to those around us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everybody can be seated, and those who are receiving Holy Communion for the first time, you can come forward under the guidance of these wonderful ladies. The body of Christ. Amen. For those at home who are unable to be with us in person, we take this time to pause and invite Jesus into our hearts as a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
giving thanks to God for this wonderful celebration. Let's stand and say the final prayer together. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go forth in peace and joy. Thanks, and let's give a little round of applause to all our first community. Difference.